I truly believe that it is a gift to be an artist. An artist. A dancer. An actor. A writer. And there's something else I want to share with you as an artist. That art has saved my life. You've certainly not extended it. And this thing that we call art, I've been able to quell the anxiety and anger inside me because I've been able to express it. I've explained to myself that no one else could explain to me about bringing in the good to replace the bad at times when I needed to. And it's allowed me to heal. the song for me, Pacific Coast Highway. I was totally blown away because I had these wonderful visuals and moments about my association with PCH. I was fortunate to grow up near the beach. And it was a big part of my life. And where I lived, to get to the beach, you crossed PCH. In California, that road follows you from the south to the north. And she was always on your left-hand side. Like a friend. I spent many days of my youth under the sun and in the water with friends and by myself. I have many memories that are both good and bad about the great Pacific Ocean. many of us Indians on the coast believe when you pass on, you pass through the western gate to that other life. I thought about Wilbert, Joseph Nelson, Willie, my best friend who recently passed through that gate. Song took on another significance for me. I don't know how to explain a friendship about brotherhood, about being from the tribe. Amen.
Let the healing begin. Let the healing begin. saying amongst ourselves about men that are men's men. We call them real guys. Real guys. And you say it like that. A real guy is knowledgeable in the Indian way of the language the ways of our people, about knowing useful things like chopping wood and motors, equipment. He may have been a sportsman, a gambler. I think you get my drift. But I also know a real guy to have a soft place in his heart for the people. But many, many times you would not think this. They would give you the shirt off their backs, lend you money without even asking because they saw and felt you were in need. Hey, they might even give you their last beer. That's right. Real guy, Willie Nelson is a real guy. started, but I think it was in Willie's backyard under the pepper tree where we used to sit and gather to have something, as we like to say. We may have been finished working or getting ready to work, but I remember this moment. He stood up and he looked at us and he said, gentlemen, Gentlemen, stand up. And without hesitation, we all stood up. And he raised his can. He said, when you take this drink in your hands to your lips, as you drink it, with your other hand, you tap it on the side. You tap it down. Well, we did it. And he's saying, tap it down, gentlemen, tap it down. And we all started laughing. Well, this happened several more times. Not just then, but later. At other times and places. And I finally said, I gotta ask. I gotta ask where he got that. I said, bro, where did you get that tapping thing down? He smiled. He said, when Jenny 
Ginger, and my daughter, was little. You remember? She was in her diapers with her hair all messed up and her dirty face running around here, and she always had her bottle in her hand. And every so often, she'd stop to take a shot. And sometimes that bottle be all clogged up with baby food, so she'd hit it. She'd tap it on its side to get that food out. I cracked up. But you see, Bro took it to another level. He made it a toast. A toast. So that we would all stand up and be one for just that little moment. And we tap it down. So simple. But you see, he liked to get people together. That's why he threw those horseshoe tournaments. And he told me one time, he said, Luna, I just like seeing our people have some fun. That's right. He said, tap it down. He said, tap it down. without hesitation he accepted my invitations to travel to me with some of my gigs we went to venice italy he helped me install my show when i went to sweden for a lecture he went we hung out in stockholm he went with me and my son to houston and i was performing with that mad mexican and we went to other sorted gigs up and down in California and across the USA. And all those places we went, yeah, that's right. He got him to tap it down. He created the tap it down movement. And now, and now there are people all over the world spreading the word. They're tapping it down at the VFW in Escondido in San Marcos, California. They've been tapping it down there at Genie Store in Palma. They've been tapping it down at all the local casinos. They've been tapping it down at Brother Kenny's and other countless backyard barbecues. They've been tapping it down at Horseshoe and softball tournaments. They've been tapping it down. They've been tapping it down. That's right. no matter where you're at and join me and if you don't have something in your hand to drink then go get something it could be water it could be fine wine it could be what we call a frost air and let's stand here together and raise our glass our can or bottle Take it to our lips, tap it, tap it down. Yeah, you got it. 
Indian Lodger. Some things I learned along the way as a man and things I still practice till the day. And at the end of each little lesson, I'm gonna throw in something because I want it. It's something my cousin Butch Rod says. Butch Rodriguez. It goes something like this. I say, hey, Butchie boy, mighty hot today here. Let's go to the tribal store and pick up a couple tall, cold ones. And Butch smile that Rodriguez smile of his, he say, you bet. Lesson number one. Say you go hunting. This includes fishing. Or you might be picking mushrooms, you know. You're getting something off the land. Well, if you get lucky, you get a basket full of mushrooms. You get some greens. You get a rabbit or two. later when it's cooked or right there right then you share that you share your bounty you know why you know why because it was a gift from him the creator share that bounty of mother earth and remember this Never, never sell that stuff. Never sell that stuff because the next time you go hunting, gathering, you're gonna have some bad luck. You're gonna come back empty-handed. You bet.
of these things don't make sense. Well, let me give you an example about what I call Indian affection. If you're an outsider and you be around us, and we begin to like you, accept you, then you become the butt of the jokes. You become involved. You start catching hell. <laughs> because we like you. True story. So we had these outsiders come and they hung for the day and we started a warm up to them. So we said, let's take a ride. Let's check out, let's check out the community here. So, some of the locals jumped in the back of my truck and in the back seat and these people joined in and but we made their honcho, their leader sit in front with me. They rode passenger side, shotgun. Well, we took off. Every time we stopped someplace, the Indians started laughing. And the white people were looking at each other going, What? <laughs> you see, when you ride shotgun, you the one that have to get off and open all the goddamn gates. You bet! We're just showing we love you. Dark man, Indian, black man, Asian man, who be strutting his stuff, who dyed his hair orange, and thinks he looks good. You bet. I know. I just made that one up. Johnny Pine, brother, we be sitting here on this log, contemplating last night's activities. Sun come up about an hour ago, old time at over the hill. Be sitting here in that smoke, looking kind of greasy. Johnny lift his head and kind of smile. He look at me and he say this. He said, Pod, Pod, we got it.
messing up what he meant that we're home. And I want you to think about home. No matter where you're from, where you're at, or maybe where you'll end up. Cause that's the place. That's the place where it'll be like no other place. Because you'll have peace of mind. Yeah, that's right. This gathering started yesterday, Friday. And nephew Mikey was coming up the grade, home to the res. He got a flat. He pulled the turnout over there by the red gate. The brothers, the sisters, cousins. good about being home. Well, they finally got around and fixed his tire and somebody said, hey, let's go to see Uncle Johnny Pine over there on the east side of the res. We call it Pamacha. That's right. Well, those cars started coming down the hill down there into Pamacha land and Johnny Pond was out there watering his garden, and he looked up and kind of smiled. They said, hey, Uncle Johnny. He said, come on in, boy. Yeah. Someone sent for those frosties. Someone said, Uncle, can we uh, start a fire? He said, yeah. Go right ahead. something here. This ain't some song about Indians boozing. It's more about, more about, like I say, being home. Because a lot, most of us work here. And we come up that hill from that other world down there. And we're here amongst each other. Understand you speak the same language, you know what I mean? Laugh at the same jokes. And it isn't just about drinking. There's a little knowledge going around here about the way things used to be. Little language spoken. Our language. Maybe an Indian song played now.
right. And no one gets out of hand down here. Or maybe somebody gets slammed, but hell, that ain't fight. Had some nice food and one by one those friends and relatives start going home and guess what? this morning, sitting here on that log, contemplating what went down, feeling real good. Oh, here comes our nephew, Chief. Hey, Chiefy. Nephew, take me and your uncle down below. We want to go breakfast at casino and maybe we'll make a run while we're at it yeah Sunday we got a few hours left and maybe we'll do it all over again you know why you know why 